This is Campus Lore Live, where NFL players are the experts on college football. I'm your host, Drew Butler. Join alongside my co-host, Aaron Murray. And Aaron, we have a special show this week. We are joined by an awesome guest, Indianapolis Colts rookie running back Jonathan Taylor joins us later on in the show. One of the best college football players of all time from the University of Wisconsin, a two-time unanimous All-American running back and a two-time winner of the Dope Walker Award as the nation's best running back. He's going to join us later on to talk about the Big Ten's return this weekend. We have a lot to discuss from this past weekend. Aaron, there was a top five matchup in the SEC. You and I are obviously extremely familiar with it. Number two, Alabama hosted number three, Georgia, and Georgia got whooped 41 to 24. A lot to break down with this game. People are asking if Stetson Bennett is the man for Georgia. Alabama looks to be as legit as people thought. Give me your initial thoughts as Alabama has demanded and gotten the respect as a top team in the nation. Well, it was a great football game in the first half. I mean, Georgia goes up in the locker room and you're like, okay, things are feeling pretty good. And you and I have been a part of games against Alabama and seeing games against Alabama where you're heading in the halftime, you're heading in the fourth quarter with the win. But as we know, when you face Alabama, the game's not over until you're in the locker room celebrating the victory. And and those guys just showed up. Alabama's defense was lights out there in the second half. And, you know, there's obviously going to be lots of discussion here during the bye week for Georgia. Play sets in Bennett, not play sets in Bennett. Where's JT Daniels? A lot of confusion going on in that position. And I just think, once again, there's a lot of other problems with that offense. they got to find more playmakers on the outside. they got to continue to run the ball more. But I think primarily it's the receivers. I mean, they have good receivers. Don't get me wrong. You know, some of those guys, Bird and Pickens and Jackson, they're good. They're not elite. They can't take over a football game like you see some of these other receivers and receiving cores across the country. So it's not all in the quarterback. I know Stetson did not have his best game, but they got to get better around him, and the defense has to play better in these big-time matchups. Georgia was leading this game at halftime 24-20. to Georgia has done a very good job at leading Alabama for most of the game and then just not winning at the end of the game. In the second half, it was a different story. Georgia did not score in the second half. They were outscored 21 to nothing in the second half, and a lot of that had to do with three turnovers. A lot of Georgia fans are wondering, where's JT Daniels? Why are we sticking? Why is Georgia sticking with Stetson Bennett? It's pretty clear, Aaron. Something must be going on. Stetson's played every snap since the second half of the Arkansas game. Something must be going on for no other quarterbacks to get a single snap since Stetson's taken over. If JT was going to be the guy, you would have thought they'd have given some reps. And, and right now, Dwan is number two uh, in the depth chart behind Stetson. So, you know, for all those fans that thought that they were going to get this kid from California to show up and, and just be this terrific quarterback to lead him to the promised land, maybe he's not as good as maybe Georgia fans were hoping, anticipating he would be. Four games into the season, with a couple of games that were out of hand for Georgia, they're winning the game. You would think that, hey, maybe we're going to get him some playing time, see what he looks like in the new offense. But the fact that he's not even number two right now, the fact that you haven't seen him at all this season, to me, is just a signal that, hey, guys, maybe we just need to stop talking about JT Daniels, focus on sets and Bennett, focus on our running game, focus on getting our, our receivers better, or go back to Dewan Mathis and give him a legitimate chance to be the starting quarterback for Georgia. Yeah, Alabama put their foot down, stomped Georgia by 17 points. Georgia was a top five team. They're looking to make a statement. And who else made a statement? Well, the number one team in the nation, Clemson, this weekend beat Georgia Tech 73 to 7. And then the number three team now, Notre Dame. Notre Dame waiting in the wings, another ACC team. Yes, they're playing in the ACC this year. Is Notre Dame supposed to be, are they even allowed to be in that discussion with Alabama and Clemson, Aaron? No, no, no chance at all. When, when, when Clemson has a chance, to play Notre Dame at some point this season, uh, they're going to take them to town. It's going to be tough to watch just because, listen, I like Notre Dame. They're a good football team. Ian Book, I, I'm a big fan of him, but there's just no weapons. I mean, they, they're built very similar to Georgia. Take care of the football and then play great defense. They just don't have that excitement, that playmaking ability that can match with Clemson. So I say when those teams play, uh, I think it's going to get pretty ugly. I see Clemson wins that game by definitely double digits when they face the, the Fighting Irish. Speaking of that number one team, it's Clemson. It's led by Trevor Lawrence. He is off to an amazing start. He had an unbelievable weekend against Georgia Tech. Starting to get those comparisons, Aaron, versus Joe Burrow from a year ago. 
through five games, Trevor Lawrence has 15 touchdowns. He's got four rushing touchdowns, over 70% completion percentage, only one interception. Compare that to Joe Burrow's first five game last year's, probably against a little bit better competition. Burrow still has better statistics. These two guys, man, it is a special time to watch these quarterbacks play. I think people just expect Trevor Lawrence to show up and play. Ever since he stepped camp on foot on campus at Clemson, people expected him to play at a different level. And he is obviously not disappointed at all during his, his two and a half years there uh, as a Tiger. So I think that's the biggest difference. One is, is, is the schedule, a little bit easier in the ACC right now. Uh, and two, it's just expectations. People expect him to show up there and throw four or five touchdowns, not a really a high completion percentage, not really to turn the football over, get the W and move on to the next week. I mean, both fantastic quarterbacks. Skill-wise, you got to give the nod to Trevor Lawrence, but memorable season and just playing out of his mind, I'm going to give the nod to Joe Burrow. Yeah, Trevor set the bar high. He is looking to meet those expectations. He's off to a fantastic start. We're thrilled to continue to watch him. What else are we thrilled about? The Big Ten coming back into action this weekend. Come on and join us right after the break. We're going to dive in. What to expect coming up this week as the Big Ten gets ready for 2020. You're watching Campus Little Live. We are back. Drew Butler and Aaron Murray here, Campus Lore Live. Aaron, the Big Ten is ready to rock and roll. It is the third weekend of October. We've been waiting for this to happen. We've been waiting for them to jump into the discussion, and it's finally here. we got some great football lined up this weekend. The SEC kind of taking a week off, if you will. They had to do some scheduling mix-ups with some COVID things going on, but we got the Big Ten back, and we have some fantastic matchups coming up. Ohio State is hosting Nebraska this weekend. Everybody knows Ohio State is probably the Big Ten's greatest chance to get back in the college football playoff. Justin Fields in the Heisman talk. What are your expectations for the Buckeyes heading into 2020? They are definitely the favorite, and they deserve to be the favorite. When you have a quarterback of the caliber of Justin Fields, and then the secondary they bring on the defensive side of the football, you're going to be favorited in, in most of those games. So, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm excited the Big Ten's back. You're talking about great teams from, from obviously Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nebraska. It's exciting stuff, but to me, when I look at Ohio State, I look at Justin Fields, and I look at the rest of that conference, if those dudes show up, just like Clemson and just like Alabama, most likely they're going to take care of business, and they will be representing the Big Ten in the college football playoffs. All right, let's talk about last year's Big Ten action. Minnesota was a fantastic story. Row the boat, P.J. Fleck. An unbelievable season. College game day showed up, a top 10 ranking. They were really making a push to get into the Big Ten championship game, fight for a college football playoff spot. Do we see any team making that sort of statement in 2020 that might not be Minnesota, but one that could kind of make that next step to get into the discussion of a top tier Big Ten team? Well, one team that unfortunately they have to play Ohio State week one is, is Nebraska. Uh, it's Scott Frost's third season. I think he's a tremendous head coach, one of the best head coaches in America. So three years in, you got your culture going. You got a quarterback in Andre Martinez who who has the skill set to run your system. Just needs to take care of the football a little bit better than what he did last year. Had around nine interceptions. So if he can take the step up as a as a quarterback, you got ten starters back on that offense. This is a team I think, like I said, under under Scott Frost, that can make some noise in that conference this season. If Nebraska's good, college football is in a better place. There's no doubt about it. And the juice that Scott Frost brings when he is successful as a head coach, that would be great for the Big Ten. It would be great for Nebraska. It would be fantastic for college football. Look, we mentioned Minnesota. They got a huge game lined up this weekend. Number 18, Michigan, is playing number 21, Minnesota. And Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, speaking of getting over the hump, speaking of making a statement, Aaron, they've got to make something happen. If Jim Harbaugh is not able to beat his rivals, not able to make a real run to get into the Big Ten championship game, maybe, hopefully, beat Ohio State, what is Michigan's season going to look like if they do the same things that they've done in 2020 as they have the past couple seasons under Coach Harbaugh? I mean, I think the biggest thing for Harbaugh is you got to beat Ohio State. They've been beating Ohio State since 2011. And before that, they had a seven-year drought before that win in 2011. So it's been a long time since they've been able to celebrate uh, between the two top teams traditionally 
within that conference. So that that's the big hurdle for him to get over. I don't see that happening this year. And I just feel like the fans of Michigan are tired of the same thing over and over again with Jim Harbaugh and this Michigan football team. If you're not going to beat your rivals, if you're not going to be Ohio State, if you're not going to be the best team in the Big Ten, maybe it's time for a change. So I don't know how much longer he's going to get. Obviously, I think most coaches this season get a free pass because of everything that's gone on with COVID. So he's going to be able to go through this year feeling okay, even if they don't win against Ohio State and some of these other teams within the conference. But if you look forward to 2021 and we get the same results with an Ohio State team that's losing Justin Fields, then all of a sudden you're really considering, hey, we got to make a change here at the head coaching position for the University of Michigan. Yeah, I mean, the clock is ticking. And like you said, maybe he's getting this pass with the shortened COVID season. But who knows? Expectations are always high in Ann Arbor. Michigan is a stalwart in college football. It's time to make it happen. Maybe he is able to this year, but it is certainly going to be fun to watch. So glad the Big Ten is back. And we are so glad that Jonathan Taylor, one of the greatest Big Ten college football players of all time, will be joining us to discuss Wisconsin's 2020, what's going to happen in the Big Ten, and everything in college football. So come on right back. Jonathan Taylor will join us right here on Campus Live. Okay, we are back. Welcome into the Campus Floor Live. Thrilled to be joined by our special guest this week, one of the greatest college football players of all time. That's right, former Wisconsin running back, two-time unanimous first-team All-American, two-time Dope Walker Award winner, now with the Indianapolis Colts. That, of course, is running back Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan, thank, thank you so much for joining us, my man. Big Ten football is back this week. Aaron and I have discussed how hyped we are about it. I just want to ask you, as a rookie in the NFL, with so many friends and former teammates still at Wisconsin, what was your initial reaction when you heard that there was going to be no football in the Big Ten this year amid the COVID pandemic? Oh, I mean, when I when I first heard that news, it was you start thinking about all the guys who who were next up. It's like it's his year. It's his time to step into that role to go make an impact, make plays on the field. Talk about guys that, that are going to have opportunities now. Who's next in line? I mean, Drew kind of went through your accolades. I mean, you were an incredible running back, fun to watch, powerful, had the speed, really the full package. Uh, and now we get to watch you on Sundays. But for Wisconsin, how do they replace a guy like you? Who's next in line? Give us a little scattering report on those running backs. Coach Seto is going to do a tremendous job at coaching those guys up. And it definitely helps that we can have guys there who already have experience, like Garrett Kroshek. I mean, he helped me out when I was there. We got Nikhil Watson, who's who's had some experience. You know, he's had game experience. He's had experience watching me and Garrett Groshek. So I think it's going to have make Coach Settle's job that much more easier by having Nikhil, by having Groshek there, guys who know the system, guys who played there. And I think that those guys will help those younger guys who are going to get some reps, such as, you know, Isaac Garendo and Jalen Berger, those younger guys who haven't quite had as much of that running back game experience yet. Yeah, Jonathan, it'll be interesting to see how the level of play looks for the Big Ten this weekend. The ACC, the SEC, they're four or five weeks into their season. You see how good Alabama is. You see how good Clemson is. What are your thoughts? Does the Big Ten have a team in 2020 that can get into the college football playoff and really fight for a national championship? Every single game counts. Um, it, there is not a room for error, and especially for the Big Ten. Um, like you said, other teams are – in week five and week six. So every single Big Ten team that starts out on this upcoming week, they're going to have to find a way to find their identity and they're going to have to find a way to get rolling fast. So when I think about Big Ten football, obviously think about the running game. I think about powerful offenses, great defenses, great football games. So, I mean, once again, I'm, I'm excited to see them get going this weekend. Besides your stadium at Wisconsin, what's your number one place – to play your favorite place to play within the Big Ten. One of my favorite places to play would definitely have to be Iowa. I mean, uh, the, the Hawkeye Wave. I mean, it's just that's a special tradition. I'm actually glad that um, you know Iowa was able to kind of start that tradition up. I mean, going in there, you're locked in. It's a it's Wisconsin versus Iowa. You know what kind of game it's going to be. It's going to be a physical game, a good old fashioned football game. And you know, after that first quarter. And have everyone look up uh, to the children's hospital and wave to the patients. And I, I think that was that was just a cool tradition um, that those guys started. And I, I think I, I was, you know, honored to be a part of that. 
So game this weekend, Wisconsin versus Illinois, and, and Illinois played well last year for Lovey Smith. Um, this is going to be a fun game, unique offseason. Uh, everyone's kind of at a disadvantage. Your prediction score, one, uh, and two, what do you want to see most from your football team this weekend to get the W? Making sure that, you know, we start fast. I mean, there's not, like I, like I said, I mentioned before, there's not a ton of room for error, um, you know, especially with a season like this. There are going to be some guys who come in not prepared on other teams. And I know the kind of prep preparation we do at the University of Wisconsin, Coach Chris, you know, J Coach Leonard. I know that, you know, offense, defense, special teams wise, they're doing everything in their power to get those guys ready. Now it's up to, to the guys. It's up to the players to lock in and focus, step on that field and make those plays. All right, Jonathan, before we let you go, man, I know the season is yet to start. We're looking forward to it this weekend. But tell me how Wisconsin is going to do in 2020. And will a Big Ten team make the college football playoff? Will it be Wisconsin? Yeah, I definitely think that we'll do well this year. Um, there's not been a lot of, uh, you know, kind of talk about, you know, the different rosters in college football just because at first – there was no football at all, and then teams started, you know, coming back in, saying, okay, this conference is going to play, this conference is going to play. But um, definitely, we have a lot of experience. I mean, there's a lot of people that talk about a lot of the guys that left um, this past year, but you got to think about the guys who, you know, left. They left a mark. They left a mark. They left some leadership. And there are guys who have a ton of game experience, you know, not only in the running back room, but in all positions, defense. Um, special team. So I feel like those guys that have experience, they're going to be the new leaders to emerge uh, for the team and help and help lead those guys. And I think it's uh, eight games. I think we have eight games, all conference games. So I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing those new leaders emerge um, because it won't be a surprise to us, any of the guys who left, um, seeing those new leaders emerge. But I know I can't wait for the rest of the world to see it um, and to have those guys go out there and have fun. All right, everybody, gladly awaiting the Big Ten's return. High expectations at Wisconsin. Regardless of who fills those shoes, Jonathan, I'm sure yours are going to be tough to fill, man. One of the best resumes in recent history in all of college football. Thanks so much for joining us this week on Campus Store Live. And when we come back, Aaron and I are going to dive into what to expect this weekend across the country. You're watching Campus Store Live. What an honor to be joined by Jonathan Taylor, Aaron, one of the best college football players of all time. I keep saying that because it's true. He may have a future in politics ahead of him. You and I kept asking, who's going to be in the college football playoff? Can the Big Ten do it? He was dodging those questions, man. A smart guy. He knows that we'll hold him accountable. Let's get right into the week seven slate, week eight slate, excuse me. The Big Ten is back. Let's go to the big horseshoe, Nebraska. Heading to play Ohio State. Ohio State's a top five team. They haven't played yet. They're a top five team. Justin Fields is a Heisman favorite already. What do you expect here? You just said earlier in the show, Nebraska B might, might be one of those teams in the Big Ten to watch out for in 2020. Yeah, they will be, but just not this week. Unfortunately, they're facing Ohio State. and uh, Maybe it's because Fr Scott Frost was uh, running his mouth a little bit too much for the big, big 10 commissioner during all the COVID crisis going on with trying to figure out if there's a season or not. So I think they're punishing him a little bit by playing Ohio state uh, in week one. And Ohio State's just going to be too much. I mean, they're one of those elite teams, those few elite teams here in college football this season, Justin Fields is on just a different level. I mean, you go back and watch him last season, the footwork, the accuracy, the ability to run uh, and obviously his tremendous arm. And then you throw in the secondary there, for Ohio State on the defensive side of the football. So this is an elite team. I do like Nebraska year three with Scott Frost, just not in week one. Yeah, I agree with you. Ohio State kind of reminds me of a team like Clemson to where when they make the decision that they want to put their foot on the gas pedal, they can blow out any team that they want to and put as however many points on the board as they desire. That might happen this weekend to make a statement. I'll be interested to see how the Big Ten comes out. From an efficiency standpoint, it's week one. It's been a long wait but we're all fired up. Let's head to the ACC, a top 25 in-state rivalry, NC State playing UNC. UNC coming off an awful upset against Florida State. Who wins this football game? Can Sam Howell and the Tar Heels get back on track? I think so. I mean, listen, NC State's given up about 31 points per game. I really like UNC's offense. They struggled a little bit there 
versus Florida State this past weekend, but they got things rolling in the second half, really started to open up things down the football field for Sam Howe. I mean, he is a tremendous quarterback and really had a chance to win versus Florida State. There's three drop yeah. passes in that final drive, which could have made that game either go into overtime or UNC win it uh, late there in the fourth quarter. And then Michael Court Carter, they're starting running back for North Carolina. The kid is special. Quick, fast, has the power to run over you. I just think that offense for UNC is going to be too much for NC State to handle. I like the Tar Heels in this one. I do too. They got to get back on track. There is so much hope in Chapel Hill. I think they right the wrongs, keep moving forward, hopefully line up some action in the ACC later on this year. Look, we've told you, we are the official show of the American Athletic Conference. We have a fantastic matchup this weekend. Number nine, Cincinnati going up against number 16, SMU. These are two unbeaten. Cincinnati's got a great defense. SMU, a high-powered offense. This is a primetime game. I'm fired up to watch this one. Who's going to win? I, I love this game. I'm a big fan of Cincinnati. Luke Fickle is a tremendous head coach. They're just a little bit more balanced than SM, SMU. I mean, you alluded to it. SMU with, with Shane Bouchel as their quarterback lighting up the scoreboard right now. But this is the best defense that they're going to face so far this season in Cincinnati. Seven interceptions for that side of the football. And then they play great, great offense as well. Desmond Ritter, a quarterback that not only throw the football, can pull down and run it as well. So I just think overall Cincinnati between the offense and defense, a little bit more balanced, a little bit better. Uh, should be an inter interesting football game, but I got to give the nod uh, to Cincinnati and Luke Fickle. You know what? I'm going to fade you here. I'm going to go with SMU at home in prime time. See if the Mustangs can carry that momentum to fight for a top four spot at the end of the season. All right, Big Ten's back. A great college football game in the top 25. Number 18, Michigan hits the road to play number 21, Minnesota. Coach Harbaugh, you got to get off to a great start. P.J. Fleck and the Golden Gophers looking to carry that momentum from a year ago. This will be a great game. Sloppy or not, Aaron, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, I, I like Minnesota in this one. Um, I just Michigan just named their quarterback, this guy named Joe Milton. Kid is huge, 6'5", 245. So he's built to play in this conference. Absolute beast. Uh, I just really like what, what, what P.J. Flex down there at Minnesota. I mean, he has one of the best receivers in the country, Rashad Bateman. Kid had 11 touchdowns. I like Min Minnesota in this one at home. I like what they're returning on offense. And, and I just think there's too many question marks for Michigan right now. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm picking up what P.J. Fleck is putting down. If the culture has changed at Minnesota, if he's really made them a perennial Big Ten threat, this is the game you have to win. You have to carry the momentum from 2019 into 2020, beat a blue blood like Michigan and say we're here to stay. I'm with you. I like Tanner Morgan. I like Rashad Bateman. Golden Gophers get a big win at home this weekend. All right, let's go outside the box before we wrap this thing up. It's been a different season in 2020. You can't look past an upset. Really expect an upset every week. Who's your upset this week? Who was on upset alert in week eight? Hey, listen, there's not a lot of crazy games where you, you think there's going to be upset. Obviously, there's going to be as, as we've watched the, the college football season so far. But to me, I'm going to have an eye on that Pittsburgh game against Notre Dame. They're at home right now. Jordan Addison, the receiver, is 28 touchdowns. And I just don't have a lot of faith at the moment in Notre Dame in that offense. Yes, they play great defense, but their offense just lacks the talent on the outside. Okay, I'm going to tell you one as well. That's going to have a lot of implications at the end of the season. It might not be the biggest upset, but number 17 Iowa State is playing number six Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Can Iowa State become the state champions of Oklahoma. Can they beat Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and just completely throw a wrench in the Big 12's hopes of the college football playoff? That's the game I will be watching to really see how this season can get even crazier than it already is. But Aaron, we're in for a real treat. The Big Ten is back. You and I will watch it all. We will recap it next week right here on Campus Lore Live. So we look forward to you joining us. Thanks so much for watching us this week. For Aaron, I'm Drew. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching Campus Lore Live.